In this video, we're going to go over creating a Cobra Desert Base. We're going to design and concept the base, go over the fabrication, the detailing, adding some paint, and then look at the final result. I decided to do a desert base because I'd already done an Arctic base when it was snowing out around here, and I had a lot of fun doing that. So I figured I needed something to do during the warm weather to bring to the beach, something that would be a uh, a good contrast to the um, to the winter base. Before I started sketching, I looked at a lot of reference for North African, Middle Eastern type architecture. I really wanted to capture that sort of built out of that sort of adobe or hardened mud or like clay earth type feel, and the way that they combined it rectilinear with sort of cylindrical or rounded kinds of shapes. One thing I didn't like about the winter base was there wasn't a lot of outdoor space on the base itself to play with. So I wanted a big open second floor, an open tower, and I thought a stairwell would be fun to show how the characters could get up and down. And you know, you could always have battles going up the stairways and things like that. Just trying to get more play features in there. With the design mostly figured out, it was time to look at all the bits and uh, little random pieces I had laying around, tubes, old containers, bits of wood, things like that, that I could use to build the base. I, in the end, decided to make it mostly out of foam. I didn't really have a box or anything like that that I thought would be a great or perfect shape for it. So just building the walls, sort of like you'd build a house, like separate individual walls out of foam and out of cardboard was the way I decided to go. The first thing I wanted to do was establish the scale. So I just grabbed one of my G.I. Joe figures and kind of marked off how tall he was figuring out like where a door would be, how big a door should be to let the, um, the characters go in and out. And getting something like a door or stair or a window height accurate from the beginning really sets the stage for the scale of the rest of the, um, the building and really makes it feel believable. You can see there that I also used a, uh, a peanut butter container. So that's gonna be the basis of the tower. So I'm kind of mocking up these walls, figuring out the heights of those up against this peanut butter container. Now you can see I'm cutting out the chipboard. So this thinner kind of cardboard, I call it chipboard. Um, I'm kind of using it more, more as sort of a pattern. So it's thinner, it's easier to cut than the foam. And if I mess this up, I can just restart and not feel like I wasted a bunch of foam. So I'm trying to get the shapes, the door heights right. Here I'm trying to cut sort of like a little inset piece to make sure that the, uh, the wall is going to match up with my container um, because the, the peanut butter container, the lid, I want the lid size side down so I don't have to worry about like closing that off or dealing with the, um, you know, the, the weird kind of machining and stuff like that on the top where the thing screws together. Just don't want to have to worry about that. So here I'm using the pattern now to trace onto the foam and the foam is what's going to be the final walls. Now this is the kind of cool fun part. This is when we start cutting the foam and I'm using a hot wire cutter. These things are amazing. You've got to get one. If you're going to work with foam, you, you really have to get one. They have ones that are sort of like a bandsaw, like a table built into it, but I really like this one because I can just kind of, you know, pick up the foam, foam, move the foam around or move the uh, cutter around depending on the different angles I want to get. But um, this, the wire gets really hot and it just slices through the foam like a hot knife through butter. It's exactly like that. And it makes really nice cuts and really clean cuts because the heat sort of seals off the foam on the edge. So it looks really nice and um, gives you really nice finished detail. Definitely get one. So here I've traced the shape out and I've cut the wall and you can see it matches up pretty nicely. What's kind of nice about this desert kind of base we're doing is the, the edges don't have to be really perfect. You kind of want it to have a little bit of slop, a little bit of an organic feel like this was made up of mud or bricks that are not all, you know, universally perfect or exactly the same. And that also this building might be really old, so it might have aged over the time, the wind, the sand, even rain might have eroded it over time or it's been repaired and stuff. So, so that's kind of nice. If this is like the first kind of building you're building out of scratch, it's really forgiving because all your mistakes or all your, you know, kind of things that are off kind of give it more uh, more character, we like to say. Now I'm building the floor for that. I'm using foam core. Foam core is uh, thinner than the sort of insulation foam I'm using for the walls. And I use this because it's, um, 
it's thinner, so I don't have to worry about the interior ceiling height and the roof height being as thick or as off. Like, it'll give me a little more range. And also, it's just like, I have a bunch of this left over, so I was like, yeah, I'll just use this for um, for the uh, for the floor. Because the walls, I have to have that, like, thickness. I want them to feel like they're made of that kind of, like, old, you know, real thick, like, walls and blocks and adobe kind of feel. Where the floor, you're not going to see how thick it is, so I might as well just use this cheaper, you know, foam core, this extra foam core I've got laying around. So there I just scribed the... Um, the radius of the peanut butter container onto the onto that um, what's going to be the floor or the ceiling and you know just cut it out and now I'm just kind of I guess you call it like dry fitting the stuff just kind of holding it up together just making sure it sort of looks like it's going to match up so that when we go to glue it we're not going to find out like oh it doesn't match up or the radius is way off or something like that so now I'm just going to carve out a little bit of foam so I can push the foam core in there. I could just glue it right to the side of it, but I'm a big fan of like having, I guess what you call like a mechanical um, sort of like hold on it, like that'll actually like be able to push on the foam. We could just have the glue holding it to the side of the foam, but this just makes it a little more secure. And because I'll be like carrying this to the beach and knocking around outside and playing with it with the uh, soldiers and you know, Cobra will be getting bombed and things like that it's nice to know it's a little more stable and this will be um give a little rigidity to the walls because we're making it you know it's not a, a kind of pre-existing box this is a box we're making out of like all kinds of separate little pieces so this will help really hold it together so there you can see how it it's kind of like i think they call it like a tongue and groove kind of thing it just kind of like slips in there and now i'm just using my good old hot glue gun to apply some glue to the edge of the foam and then this is what we'll use to attach the tower. So I use hot glue because it's just really, um, it's easy to clean up and you can pull the parts um, apart after you've already glued them. And so it lets you kind of redo stuff if you make a mistake. So there I'm just seating the tower in and we know it's gonna fit up because we did the dry fit. And then just hold it for a little bit and then kind of let the, um, the hot glue dry. You want the hot glue to be nice and hot so um, it doesn't start to dry while you're still kind of positioning and fitting the pieces. And then you want to hold them a bit till it does kind of cool off. And then, you know, it's going to hold everything. But there you can see, there are the pieces um, all held together. And now I'm using one of my G.I. Joe's. I think that's the stun driver, Cobra stun driver. Um, just to check the heights of things so the wall looks pretty good and the height of the ceiling looks pretty good. I actually, looking back at this, I wish I'd made the walls a little bit higher on the second floor. But again, that was dictated by the size of that peanut butter container. Because if I made the walls too high, they would have come up and been even with the height of the um, the tower. And I wanted the tower to stick up above the walls of the main building. And so, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. But I wish I had a little bit of a taller container. So I could have made those walls a little bit higher. And even the front door, like a little bit higher. But, um, but it works pretty good. So here I'm just um, going to do the same thing for the second wall. So instead of using my X-Acto blade, I'm using the um, the hot glue, uh, not hot glue, the uh, the wire cutter to just cut my my little channel where I'm going to slip the foam core into. And what's nice is this piece happened to be um, wide enough or not too wide for my cutter to work on. And then you'll see that'll slip in. So what's nice is like that'll almost hold without the glue. And then you know it's going to be a good connection because you put the hot glue in there and that's just going to really like not let it move around. Now here is a little kind of trick or cheat I like to do. So you just hold like a metal straight edge on your foam and push your hot wire cutter next to it and you'll get yourself a really nice straight edge. So we're doing pretty good. We got two walls up. We got the tower connected. Now we're fitting the third wall. Just kind of figuring out about how big it is. And then we'll just add that in the same way we did the other towers. Just you know, put a groove into it and then slide it right into the uh, into the foam core. Here's another little trick. Um, if you find you're building something like this and it's getting out of square, like some of the edges aren't straight up and down. So I just put a piece of the um, of the chipboard up against that, knowing I had a straight edge, and I just trace that from the ground um, up against the wall, and that gave me a straight line up and down the wall, knowing that would be um, perpendicular to the ground level. So. 
once I had that scribed onto the uh, onto the wall, I'm just using the hot wire cutter to just cut that wall so the edge is nice and straight and lines up. That'll just help you, um, you know, just keep things square as you're working your way around whatever structure it is you're building. So now the last part we have to do is this end wall. So this is the fourth kind of side of our box. And so I'm just adding um, the pieces the same way we did all the other walls, just making that little cut that I'll seat into the foam core. You can see I've got it fit up there, you know, again, just dry fitting it and checking the scale of things. And it's looking pretty good. I like having that space up there where you, know, you can have some battles or have some guys just guarding uh, the base from all directions. The next thing is adding the stairs. So that'll be the last last real bit that we have to build. So I'm just kind of grabbed a piece of like a random piece of like a weird shaped scrap and just sort of cut or just scribed and drew on there. Kind of the shape I thought the, uh, the stair should take. Pretty much just like a 45 degree angle or something like that. And now I'm just putting that together. And I think that looks pretty good. It doesn't stick out any farther than the front of the building. And we should be able to just cut, cut out some foam stairs and secure that to the, uh, the sidewall. And here it looks pretty good. You know, our guy pretending to walk down the stairs looks pretty good. Should, should work for our Joes. And now we just have to cut out all the steps for that. But luckily it's not too many steps. So just using a piece of foam, we'll just cut out individual steps for each one. And kind of round the edge so it gives that sense of age and, um, and wear to the stone that's making up these steps. And so once they're all cut out, it's just a matter of getting the old hot glue gun out and just gluing them in place. You know, just a little glue on each edge will be strong enough to hold these because they're kind of sandwiched between two pieces, so you don't need to worry about them moving around too much. The front door is simple to add, so I just kind of drew out a shape that I thought would be good for that, and then just using the, uh, the wire cutter, just cutting that shape right out. So at this point, it's starting to look like a building. We're coming into the uh, the home stretch. So I'm just grabbing the guys, doing another scale check, seeing how it feels. Looks pretty good. So now we just got to cut out some windows, cut out the top of the tower, and we'll call this done. So to finish off the tower, I just cut out the top. You know, just using the X-Acto knife, just got a you know, decently round edge to that. And, um, you know, wanted to make sure there'd be enough space for the Cobra Troopers to be up there guarding the place. Then to make the floor, I just traced an identical peanut butter container, you know, because the other one was glued to stuff, so it was hard to trace on. And then just cut out that piece of foam and hot glued it right inside the tower. And then this would be plenty to support any kind of figures or um, equipment, you know, even if I put a rocket launcher up there or something like that. And then I cut this kind of ring to just make the bottom of the container and the tower feel like it was more seated, like they built up more bricks and more kind of um, structure at the base of this. And maybe over time, things had collected there as well. I wanted to cut out some windows in the back, some smaller kind of windows. So I just grabbed out my, I guess it's not an X-Acto knife, but like sort of a longer bladed cutter. And that was good for getting through the foam and kind of just carving out those big kind of holes. I sort of gave them like sort of a, um, a narrowing effect as they got inside or closer to the inside structure that I noticed in some of the reference. And here I'm going to fit some wood above the, um, the openings. So I noticed again in the ref that, you know, when the clay bricks or just clay was used, that they'd use wood or some kind of other material to, uh, to support the clay or the bricks above openings, um, I guess. I guess they didn't really want to use an arch or something like that in such a small area. So using wood or something else uh, worked well. And it looks good too because it breaks up the, the uniformity of this thing being made of like just one homogenous kind of material. So getting some, some other stuff in there is great. So now it's time to attach our staircase to our main structure. And you can see there I used some toothpicks that I just kind of shoved into the foam along with the hot glue. I figured the toothpicks would give it a little more strength because this is kind of like hanging off the side of the, um, off of the building. And why not? It'd just be a little more helpful. And so I'm just kind of slowly pushing that in, trying to get sure that, um, make sure that it lines up as, as well as it can. But again, if there's little errors, it's not that big a deal. So we're mostly done. You can see the bottom's a little junky looking, but on the outside, it looks pretty good. 
Um, we've got that kind of feeling we wanted. It looks kind of like the ref. Um, it's a little smooth on the outside, so we're going to do a treatment to try to roughen up the side, especially that peanut butter container that's just like glass smooth. So let's add some texture to this and then some paint. So this is my first time using this material. It's kind of like a spackling material, almost like you know, you'd use on drywall. And what's interesting is it's like this crazy pink color, but once it dries, it dries white. So it's kind of neat that you can see where you put it, um, especially, I guess, they, they do it. So, you know, if you're doing it on drywall, you'll see where, where you've put it already and where you put the spackle. So I'm just using this to kind of fill in the gaps, but also to kind of layer on, um, almost like you would stucco or sea stucco on a building, because I kind of want to get that feeling. Um, the foam, when we add paint, it'll feel really smooth. And especially this part with the tower is just so um, smooth with that plastic it'll just look, um, it, it just won't look right. So I'm putting this on in the hopes that it'll give a little bit of tooth and grit and, uh, you know, some texture to that out, outside, um, outside of the building and make it feel like it's a real kind of Middle Eastern worn old type building. So um, this is it pretty much done, um, you know, with everything spread on. And I think it looks pretty good. It, you know, got smeared some places, but filled in some gaps. And then once it dried, it really looked pretty good. You know, it, it had that kind of stucco feel and um, was kind of making things blend together, which is what I was after. I hit it with some paint and I thought that looked okay, but the foam, a little bit of it deteriorated from the paint, which was not great, but kind of gave a concrete kind of um, stucco feel. But the, um, the peanut butter thing you can see is still... You know, I got a little bit of it at the top, but the sides still feel like way too smooth. So I'm taking gesso, which is kind of like a thick paint, and just covering the uh, the entire surface, or most of the surface with that, just to build up like another layer of material that looks like it's been added, especially to the tower. I hit that just to give it some more texture because it, it just felt like way too smooth still. And so I'm trying to, you know, just put it on there, kind of sloppy, but just like it's been painted in different directions and, you know, over time by different people just doing repairs and, you know, patching things up and, you know, sort of dealing with the, uh, the aging of this, this building. So then I let it dry and hit it with paint again, and I was pretty psyched. It came out really good. Um, it looked really good, and the last thing to do was sort of touch up the wood because the wood had been hit with the same paint that I was on. Uh, painting the side of the building so just a little brown paint on the wood just to make it pop out make that different material kind of show up and just using a, you know cheap little brush to to kind of brush that on and not worried about it being too uh too perfect just don't want to get it onto the stucco mud kind of area and that's pretty much it so in the end i'm really excited with how this came out it really gives a great home to my desert cobra troopers and the camels and all the little extra stuff I have just adds to that whole sense of this being this Lawrence of Arabia kind of like base out in the middle of the desert. I really enjoyed the build as well. I thought it was fun and not too crazy or complex, but I could see wanting to make more buildings to add on to this little desert village. I hope you learned something while watching this and maybe it inspired you to go out and build something. Thanks for watching our video and yo Joe.